the one thing the Holy Spirit taught me is that you cannot make the imperfect your standard to have a perfect outcome. Mm. You cannot make the imperfect your standard. Mm. You cannot make the imperfect your standard to have a perfect outcome. <laughs> so your husband is not perfect. If you make your, if all of us should make our partners our standards, or my wife should even make me her standard to say, well, if my husband does this, then I'll do that. Then you're going to mess up big time. Yeah. yeah. Because I may not always get it right. So I am not your standard. Jesus Christ is our standard. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. You are welcome once again. And this month, being a month of marriage, is so significant for me personally. And if you ready, want to introduce our, I mean, our speaker for tonight, Pastor John Bosco, who is loaded in area of marriages, relationship, whatever that is concerning your marriage or relationship, we believe in that the Lord will use this set man to bring solution to us in the name of Jesus. And people, I want you to prepare your hearts. As the man speaks, he might be speaking as a man, but it's the spirit in him connected to the Holy Spirit that is speaking to you. So you want to prepare and be ready to receive as he speaks in the name of Jesus. You're welcome, Pastor Bosco. You're welcome. You're welcome. Thank you. How, how, how have you been, Pastor Bosco? Well, by grace, we are doing well. Wow. Um, wow. I, I think we missed the week. Yeah. But by grace, yeah. we are back. Wow. We thank God. And, and, and people... You saw the except of the first session, 360 husband, becoming a 360 husband and wife. We've gotten so much reaction from Prophet's timeline, people reaching out that they, they want a full session. <laughs> people are even requesting that we should have you like, like a full session where they can interact more. Yeah. And, and people, this is Pastor John Bosco. He's from Global Revival Ministry. Ministry. Yeah. He's a man of prayer and a married man in a godly marriage and in a good marriage. <laughs> And he is going to pour into us tonight. And Pastor Bosco, I mean, I had a friend who reached out to me after the first session who mentioned that, I mean, certain times, some of the discussions you had, <laughs> this is really bad because the person was like, you were hitting so much on, on the men, especially in the area of, say, not being faithful. But there's somebody on his or her terrain who happens to be a married woman who finds herself in a very complicated situation because of you, the lack of the love love the person expects. So one way or the other, the devil played some ruffian guy around his plane and is now finding himself in some entanglement. What do you say before we enter into today's session? What do you say to help somebody out there who might be having this kind of challenge who might be because they, they, they feel the need for something, something yeah. but they are not receiving from their spouse. What do you do in such situations? Okay, so it's important to um, understand. I think this falls under one of the lessons I treat, which is times of temptation. Mm. The various times in our lives that we are tempted. And one of those seasons is when you are in need. Mm. All right. So when you read Matthew four, you realize that Satan came to tempt Jesus mm. um, after he had fought, fasted forty days and forty nights. Yeah. And the Bible said he was hungry, mm. and when he came, he said, "If you are the Son of God, turn these stones to bread." Why bread? Because at that time, that is what Jesus needed. He was hungry. He didn't need a car. He didn't <laughs> need a, a mobile phone. Food, he didn't yeah. need. What he needed was food. Mm. So that is a temptation that is riding on what you need. Mm. So we have to be very careful and sensitive because you will mostly be tempted in the area of what you need. So this woman, what she needed, uh, according to the, the report, is that she needed love mm. or maybe there's an attention she expects from the husband. It's not coming and so... You see, and the next thing is that she will now magnify the issue because another person can be in the same situation mm. but will not go and sleep with yeah. a man yeah. outside yeah. the marriage. Yeah. There are different things that keeps people faithful. Mm. The fear of God is one. But beyond that, there is a revelation you have of yourself, of your purpose in life that 
keeps you from misbehaving. It's also important to know that our partners, we are all human. Yeah. All right? We are children of God, but there is no human being who can give you everything you want the way you want it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So you will be trapped when you are the kind of person who have so much expectation on your partner. Mm. Because you may say, okay, my husband is not, your husband is not giving you attention, but I am not in the marriage, so mm. I'm not able to diagnose to even know what is taking the man's attention away. Could it be that you just pray the prayer here about God helping marriages or people who need a job to find one? Could it be that the man is not working? Could it be mm. that the income is not so okay? Yeah. What could be it that is eating up the man mm. that is making the man behave that way? Could it also be that maybe the man is also cheating for which he's not able to give time to the woman? No, yeah. But you don't do wrong to correct right. We don't do wrong to yeah. correct right. Mm. Yeah. Negative, so, negative <laughs> positive. Yeah. Mm. So you can't say, well, my husband is not giving me attention, so I'm also going to cheat. So, uh, like I'm saying, you don't do the wrong thing mm. to correct it. And another advice I'll give is that in the quest of reacting to the behavior of your partner, you should also think about your own welfare. <laughs> so how, how well are you hurting your partner or paying your partner back or satisfying yourself by giving yourself to a man outside marriage? Mm. Hmm. You, you, so you are hurting yourself you are doing something that you will soon regret it. So it's not about you paying back your husband with your own body. No. <laughs> because yeah. it has an impact on mm. your integrity. It has an impact on your spiritual life. It has an impact on your future. There's mm. so much at stake as an individual. Mm. That's why the Bible says, love your neighbor as it's yourself. So. Mm. And before you love yourself, say, love the Lord your God. God. Yeah. So by the time you are done obeying God, you would have given a second thought to what you are doing. Mm. And by so doing, you are going to love yourself because you have to ask, what is the impact of what I'm doing on my own life? So last week I mentioned that before you marry, as even as a woman or a man, you have a life to live. Marriage or no marriage, you have a life to live. You have an assignment. You give mm. an account to God. There is a generation to impact. Your peace is, is valuable. Yeah. So it's uh, you, you have to think about all these things. Mm. So it doesn't look like, okay, my husband has done this, so I'm also going to do that. And finally, I did mention also, that one thing the Holy Spirit taught me is that you cannot make the imperfect your standard to have a perfect outcome. Mm. You cannot make the imperfect your standard. Mm. You cannot make the imperfect your standard to have a perfect outcome. <laughs> so your husband is not mm. perfect. If you make your, if all of us should make our partners our standards, or my wife should even make me her standard to say, well, if my husband does this, then I'll do that. Then you're going to mess up big time. Yeah, yeah. Because I may not always get it right. So I am not your standard. Jesus Christ is our standard. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. So he is our standard. He forgave. So if, if you have a challenge with forgiving, you are striving to be like Christ. But if your husband or your wife becomes your standard, then you are never able, you are not going to be able to forgive. Mm. Because maybe three weeks, the man is not talking to you, so me to I won't do. <laughs> because he's an imperfect person who Christ is working on. Mm. All right? So maybe, I don't know if I really came out like I'm, I was hitting on them. <laughs> but, but everybody is susceptible to temptations. Yeah. And the formula yeah. for overcoming is one for all. Wow. Yeah. Wow. That, that is a powerful one. That is a powerful one. I mean, tonight, as we are going to talk about full disclosures, yeah. since we began with this discussion, okay. can I comfortably say that if you find yourself in such situation as a spouse, mm -hmm. are you to disclose fully mm -hmm. to your husband? Are you to disclose partially to your spouse? Mm -hmm. Or are you not to disclose at all? All right. So... Uh... When you talk about the time to make disclosure, mm. okay, the best time to make a disclosure in the context of what we are discussing now, the best time to make a disclosure is when you sense the force of temptation coming against you. 
not when you you've already not when it. you have already done it wow. that is not to say when you already do it you shouldn't disclose it yeah but if you are really if you are somebody who really want to get it right mm. then you make the disclosure when you sense the force of temptation so maybe there's a lady i've met we've been talking or we work together or whatever and i'm beginning to sense that mm, the way this thing is going mm. is that we are getting close mm. i'm getting comfortable mm. with this lady and all yeah. that if you are somebody who really want to be faithful the best time to make the disclosure is when you sense this force mm. not after you have slept with the lady no, no, but when no. you make the disclosure the damage is already done yeah and many a times that's what people do anyway they go into the act they get it when there's a consequence they're like you know my dear there's something i have to tell you i'm so sorry and all that <laughs> but if you really believe you can be open to your partner which we should be then you make the disclosure when the force of temptation is coming. But there are many dynamics to it. Somebody mm. listening to me may say, oh, what are saying there? <laughs> yeah, so, so, if I say it, he gets angry. Yeah, so she will we'll, get angry. We'll get that there are conditions or mm. there are things that prevent people yeah. from making disclosures, one of mm. which is the reaction of the person. Okay. Okay. So, you know, Pastor Bosco, since we're already talking about disclosure, I believe somebody might ask, what is disclosure yeah. what is this disclosure we are talking about can you break it to the basic form so that we all get it then we take it from there yeah so the the basic definition i'll give has to do with making a secret or new information known mm. please underline this words for me <laughs> making the secret making a secret a secret or new or new information information known, known. wow yes. What secret are you keeping? <laughs> what new information do you have? Make it known. Make it clear to your spouse yeah. or your partner. Yeah. Mm. Mm. From tonight, I believe most of us will live here reflecting to, to begin to make the secret, the new information known. I know my wife is watching. I don't have any secret and new information, but Pastor Bosco, you take over. <laughs> yeah, so... So that is disclosure. Mm. You are making a secret, a secret, or a new information known. Mm. All right. So let me just quickly touch on some of the things. Uh, well, some of the things you can disclose mm. in a relationship or marriage. First of all, you are talking about maybe your income, mm. gifts, and properties. All right. Your income, how much you earn, is a is, is something that you have to disclose. Mm. Uh, because I'm mixing relationship with marriage, marriage, yeah, I think we have to do a good balance. Because mm. as for marriage, you don't have to keep a secret, mm. though there are secrets people keep. Mm. So we are looking at the ideal, and we are looking at looking at the realistic situation. And anybody who really wants a situation will open up to this discussion. When we talk about relationship, certainly at a certain level in the relationship. Let me say the courtship period. When you have made the commitment to settle with the person, there are some things you can keep a secret. Mm. All right? Mm. There are certain things you cannot keep a secret. Another thing is your, 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 your sin, your past sins <coughs> and errors. Mm. You know, Pastor Bosco. Yeah. Pastor Bosco. <laughs> I want to talk for the brothers. I... Uh, I'm a brother, <laughs> and I know <laughs> it are before life. Yeah, and the before life of some brothers. Yeah, but no, some sisters too. Some sisters. So yeah. let me add my sisters and brothers. Yeah, if you should genuinely open that book. Yeah, their content. Yeah, it's not good. We'll, we'll get somebody. I mean, fainted. So okay, help me with this. This because yeah, you know, okay. I know a brother is watching. Yeah, a sister is watching. Yeah, it's like hey. <laughs> if I should tell this gentleman who wants to marry me, if I should tell this girl who wants to marry me, yeah. or if I should tell my wife or my husband, yeah. maybe the way they perceive me to be will change. Yeah. How do you go around this? Okay. So let me, let, let, me balance. <laughs> <laughs> let, let, let me balance it for you. Now, why am I saying that it's mm. important to make uh, these disclosures? Mm. You have to measure the impact mm. of the action 
on the relationship or the marriage. So there are certain things you may not disclose mm. because they are really not of essence. Wow. To this new journey. Wow. So you need to weigh what so matters. If I keep this a secret, mm. what is the impact going to be on my marriage? Number two, you need to balance disclosure with a proven character of repentance. Mm. Mm. So Paul made a disclosure to Timothy. Um, I think 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 13, all the way to 15, mm. where he talks about being a blasphemer, I've done this, I've done that. He said many things. Then he had to conclude by saying that by the mercies of God, he has been transformed. I was worse of sinners, mm. but God in his mercy. Mm. So you are not making a disclosure having a character that still puts a doubt on you. Mm. So brothers and my sisters, <laughs> your present character should not be the previous character yeah. when making this disclosure. Exactly. To give the comfort that at least with what I've seen, yeah. There's a change. Yes. Mm. So, brothers, I said, feel free. Calm down. Pastor Bosco is going to expand it more for us. Yeah. I hope you get it. I get you. So, maybe one day somebody will come and say, hey, hmm. this is your husband you are marrying there. <laughs> the time we do school, hey. the way the chase girls, eh? Yeah. That is true about your past. Mm. Um, I think Paul experienced the same thing. When he, was, he met Christ on the way to Damascus, <laughs> he was converted, and he tried joining the believers. Mm. Yeah, forget it. In fact, even Ananias told Jesus, <laughs> Jesus that, said, please mm, don't mm. try it. This Isn't... man, I <laughs> have heard mm. how he persecuted the church. I have heard. He didn't see, mm. but he heard it. Mm. There are things people have heard. And in this life of making progress, one of the key things to deal with is voices of people. Mm. So people can always raise an accusation or say one thing or the other. Disclosure makes all those things not a shocker to your partner. So by the time your partner is here that you are a womanizer, you may have already on the platform, I didn't say this, but I have to, I have to say it. You, you see, disclosure is easier when the relationship is built on the platform of good friendship. Wow. People keep things because they don't even know the people, uh, uh, those they are dealing with. So you meet somebody one week, two weeks, you propose, yes. you start their relationship. Bro, yeah. you are confined to secrets because if you should say certain things, the person will leave you. Mm. But there is a certain kind of friendship that brings you to the point of vulnerability. Mm. That this person knows you so much that, in fact, Hearing about your past even makes the person to laugh. <laughs> you even laugh over it. Yeah. Yeah. How we are getting yeah. it? Because, oh, hey, Charlie, we thank God for grace. So, <laughs> but now they have to say, you know, like there's comfort, you can yeah. talk freely. But when you don't know each other so much, and then you are like, something comes up, maybe you didn't even see it. Maybe a lady calls, who is that? Oh, she was my ex. Mm -hmm. Another person calls, you meet, go to the mall, you go somewhere, you meet somebody, who is that? Oh, my schoolmate, but Charlie, hey, but why is he calling you and talking to her? Oh, don't mind. Mm -hmm. Those times now I was dating her, but mm. so you realize that gradually the disclosures, though good, mm. are shockers. Yeah. Because yeah. this person, you didn't build enough friendship for the person to know mm. you and even come to trust you. Mm. I hope you're getting it. To even come to trust you. I don't know if you get a conversation. I, I get you. Uh -huh. But you know, Pastor Bosco. You mentioned that as to what you can disclose yeah. and what you cannot disclose. Yeah. How can you please throw light on how how you were able to determine what to and what not to? Yeah. I mean, so, there, you might say so. Like, is it like knowing how, what the, your partner or your spouse can contain, mm -hmm. or just what? Because there are certain thoughts that run into my mind about some brothers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> some, <Okay. so, laughs> so, so, go on. <laughs> let, let me, you know, uh, I think it's First Corinthians chapter three mm. when Paul was speaking, and then he said, 
I could not speak to you as mature people because you are still acting as carnal people, as mm. babies. Mm. All right? Now, Paul said, I could not speak to you as mature people, but he spoke. Mm. Okay? <laughs> he spoke, mm. but not to mature people. people. So, the, the, the level of maturity of the recipient is also very important in this conversation. Like you rightly said, how much, how much can the person take? Mm. Very important. And that is also dependent on what I call the first reaction. Right. When I first opened up to you, mm. what was your reaction? Were you using it against me? Mm. Were you bringing it up every now and then in a the conversation? So, <laughs> so your first reaction will determine how much more you get. <laughs> <laughs> so, so Pastor Bosco, you, I, I, I want to be as real as possible. Yeah. My wife, this is not to say how it's me, but <laughs> if, if <laughs> God, God forbid, yeah, I find myself in anything that is not expected of me as a husband. Yeah. And maybe I, I have gotten a bit close and had some contact mm -hmm. with the opposite sex yeah and i disclosed this to my wife yeah but knowing my wife my wife is quite emotional mm -hmm. and i know maybe one time we met this lady and he knows his husband's caliber of woman yeah and i told her that used to be one of in the past and i come again and even that i could see her countenance changed mm -hmm. subsequently she sees uh, one beta was up, was happening or calling. She goes like, "Is that the same beta who is calling?" Mm -hmm. Then there's a big issue like this. Yeah. Do you think I should still go ahead and tell it? You see, all that this has become a challenge for many reasons. One, the quality of friendship. There are husbands and wives who freely talk about these things because of the friendship. Number two, like I said, there is a proven character of repentance mm. Mm. so it's not mm. a one-way thing mm. there's a proven character of repentance mm. but if your partner does not trust you these issues will come up so you wouldn't even want to open up because if you do yeah she doesn't trust you already so the diagnosis is to find out why is that she doesn't trust you <laughs> That's where the diagnosis mm. Why is. Why my, my, my wife does not trust me? Mm. Do you know sometimes you are more untrustable <coughs> when you keep secrets than when you open up? Mm. And that is because it, it became a discovery. Wow. Wow. You didn't say it. Wow. She discovered it. Wow. So trust is broken. Totally. And even when you now begin to disclose... If you're not careful, she will look at you too, too. Mm. And it can be the opposite. It can mm. also be the lady who, who was discovered. Yeah. Hey, I thought you told me this guy is your uncle. Mm. 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 <laughs> you, should, you should see my brothers in the studio. <laughs> I thought you said he was your uncle. Mm. You say, yeah, um, well, he's not really my uncle, but like, I, I couldn't tell because I didn't know how you would take it. Mm. If you say you didn't know how I would take it, at least disclose it and see how I would take it. Mm. Sometimes your deliverance is in your disclosure, your transparency. Mm. Your deliverance is in your disclosure. Yeah. Wow. If I tell you this lady used to be ABC, maybe based on your assignment, let's say you want to be a pastor or your kind of uh, work is a people's work, yeah. and you are going to interact with a lot of ladies. If I tell or you tell the lady you are in a relationship with, but, oh, this lady, yeah, we used to date, but now there's nothing again. And since then, the person's mood have changed. It's an indication that you're going to have problems in marriage, even when you are faithful. Because per, by, by... Please, 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 take it again. Are, I'm soaking are, it. Yeah. Even if you are faithful. Why? Because wow. being faithful does not mean you will not be exposed to temptations. Mm -hmm. So now, she just gets to know that the person you mm -hmm. met at the party or so and so was your former girlfriend. You are broken up, but... At least you saw each other. So, hey, how are you? And then you said it. But your nature of work 
exposes mm. you to people every day. You travel almost every now and then, just telling you that the person we met, not you know, my former girlfriend, but we have moved on. Just that alone, mm. I've made you to frown your face the whole day. <laughs> it's telling me, you the man, it's telling you that mm, where you are going, there's a problem. It's a good grounds to even end the relationship. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So your wow. openness, your openness can deliver you and your openness can help you to build trust. My brothers and sisters, let our openness deliver us whatever we are harboring in us. And you, you know what? Usually when we get tempted and we keep the sins in us, yeah. that's why, that, that's where that, that temptation breeds the fruit. Yeah. And then we come is the work that, of the devil. My pastor once said, we make provision for sin. Mm -hmm. Then we come back and blame the devil. Yeah. You make provision for those sins. But suppose, I was just wondering, can the insecurities of a man or human yeah. affect the ability to disclose? So I feel like if I disclose, I'll lose my wife. If I disclose, I'll lose my husband. Yeah. And because oh, the, my, my husband is my world. Mm -hmm. My wife is my world. I don't want to lose her. Yeah. Can it affect me not to disclose? If so, what do I do? Yeah, so it, it can prevent you from making disclosures. I think in Joshua chapter 9, the Gibeonites heard about um, the exploits of mm. the Israelites and they came to them and said, please, we are from a very far mm. country. Accept us to be your servants. Make a covenant with us. Mm. But it's not true. Mm. The Bible said they were just their neighbors. Yeah. But it's, they told a lie because of fear. So one of the things that can prevent you from making disclosure is fear. I mentioned one earlier. The fear of the reaction of mm. the person. Mm. He is quick-tempered. He will kill me. She will poison me. <laughs> this is my wife. So fear. Mm. Like you rightly said, if I tell this, the, I don't have any job. This is the man who has yeah. done this. I've done yeah. that. So if I should tell the truth, or of what has happened, I will lose the person. But I say again, you see, sin thrives in secrecy. Sin thrives yes. in secrecy. One of the importance of disclosure, like I said, is your own deliverance. Mm. It frees you from the bondage of yeah. sin. Do you know how many husbands are paying money every month to a girl mm. just to keep, keep the girl quiet? Mm. And even their wives don't get access to that kind of money. Please bring their money home. Bring them. They have not been paid their children's school fees. Mm. But there's a girl on payroll, <laughs> just because they did something. Yeah. And the girl has a record. If you don't give me the money, I will expose you. But the hold of manipulation is broken mm. the day you open up. Mm. In fact, even if you lose your wife, mm. you lost your wife on the platform of truth yeah. on the platform yeah. of transparency and mm. you yourself, you are saved. Ah. Don't forget, going to heaven is more important than, than, your marriage. than yeah. what you are doing. Wow. Your life is at stake. Worst case scenario. You see, behind the scene eh, is the devil. Hmm. But people don't see it. So worst case, when the girl is, is done with you, she may even still release the information. <laughs> At that time, mm. trust is broken mm. again. You have lost your marriage. You have lost the side chick. Mm. You have lost your life. You have lost everything. There was a case some time ago in this nation of, I won't go into it, yeah. but the people are still alive. <laughs> of a big person who has something to do with yes, uh, little, service personnel yeah. and all that. Do you know, no matter how potent that case is and the impact it will make on the man, if the impact it will make on the man would have been 100%, it will be reduced to 50 if the wife is already aware. Mm. Mm. The biggest person you've got to deal with is your partner. If your partner is aware of what has happened, and your partner forgives you, you are settled. Hmm. Many people who are keeping secrets, not so much from their managing directors or whatever. It's from your partner. So if your partner gets to know that this happened, in fact, disclosure builds trust. Yeah. Whilst you think it will break really trust, trust, it builds trust. And when, okay, let me leave that one for now. But we'll get there. <laughs> Thanks for disclosure. We'll get there. Yeah. But it builds trust. You know, 
I'm really, really thinking. You know, certain times, you know you want to disclose yeah. or you've disclosed a couple of issues before. So let me give an example. Yeah. As a married man, you can attest to this. Sometimes you share certain information with your, your wife. You share most information with your wife. Yeah. I'm choosing my words carefully. Most of your information <laughs> with your wife. And <laughs> even, if, even your work, your personal like ministry, you share yeah. it. But they get to a point whereby you know mm. and you know, you know this information, if it goes, it is not just going to affect you and your wife, mm -hmm. the people around you, the integrity people has placed on you and the trust yeah. they placed on you. Like you're a man of God. Yeah. People come share all sort of, I mean, issues with you. Yeah. You counsel them. Would you say, if you are having discussion with your wife, mm. and I know professionally you say ethics and ethical issues will yeah. come up, but then based on, on this discussion, it's so paramount that chipping in that issue can be a way of... of of bringing an answer, mm -hmm. should you go ahead? Okay, so somebody have shared something with me. Mm. Uh, maybe somebody came for counseling. Yeah, shared something with me. That's a privileged information. Yeah, and I must be a faithful steward of that information. And then I have a discussion with my wife. Yeah. Now telling my wife what the person told me will bring a solution to what might be happening at home. Well. Um, I don't know. I, I don't know exactly what this issue is about. Somebody's information that will bring a solution to my home, mm. but because unless maybe we bring a practical. So, uh, so a practical uh, example uh, is example. Practical example is um. I I have an issue with let's see. I'm bringing finances here. Yeah. I have an issue with. I don't. My wife. My we don't have issue. I'm just giving an example. Yeah. <laughs> and the issue has to do with maybe me helping somebody in my family okay. that we've, both of us have helped the person on various occasions, but the person just throw our money and misuse it anyhow. Okay. And she's, we've all agreed not to, but the person is my family. Okay. I want to help. Okay. Then uh, my brother, that, that is not married. Another married brother comes to me. Yeah shares a similar issue is going in okay. that it's even a main world war four in the house now. Okay. But I'm trying to let my wife understand that even if I'm, we are going through it, Daniel is going through the same mm -hmm. thing. So it's not like it's something peculiar to us. It's sometimes bringing in some examples out there makes okay. you realize, oh, the issue cry. It's not just us, but, yeah. you know. Yeah. So in that, why do you marry the two that you not disclose us something your friend have told you, but yet you need to let your wife know that it is normal. So if you talk to then my friend's wife, mm. she will say, "Oh, this word." Then maybe out of that we can all jaw jaw and get mm. a stable uh, solution to. How do you do that? Okay, so so that's what I call summary versus details. Mm. Mm. Okay, please summary versus details. Yeah. Mm. So yes, um, different people are going through what you are going through. You have helped people; they waste your money; they, they keep coming and all that. So that is a summary. We are not the only people going through it. You may not even necessarily have to mention something your brother told you uh, to solidify the fact that you are mm. not the only people mm. going through this. Mm. Now, I said something that you want to check the impact of withholding information on you and your marriage. What will it cost you? If you don't tell your wife that your brother is also going through the same thing, it will cost you nothing. So the person who sent me, it will not cost you anything. <laughs> it will not cost you anything. Do you get it? Yeah. So you are you are weighing the impact of withholding. Let me give you an, the, uh, maybe a, a, a good example of this withholding stuff. You have been in a relationship before. And then maybe you, you had an affair with somebody... You're broken up, and that's in your past. But something comes up, mm. uh, and then you have to let your partner know that, okay, like I gave the example there, you, you met somewhere, so this is my ex. Then you go like, okay, well, he's my ex, so. Hmm. But when we're in the relationship, like, hey, 
every week this guy will sleep with me. <laughs> if this guy does not sleep with me four times, he's not okay. Or every time, you know, that, those are details. Mm. I'll be getting it. Hey. And the way the guy can sleep with me, eh, the guy likes sex, Papa. The, no, it's, it's not. It's, so those are unnecessary details. details. So you are looking at summary versus details. details. Sometimes when people are in a relationship, they ask questions that are unnecessary. In fact, answers to those questions end up hurting them. Hmm. They ask questions that when they get the answer, <laughs> it will hurt them. It would have been better they did not ask. So you are looking at the impact of withholding. Mm. You've done an abortion. Not once. Not twice. You are going to marry. You don't withhold such an information. But like I said, there must be a proven character of repentance. This is me. Wow. Proven this, character this of is repentance. Me. I used to but I no longer do such. Mm. Then you see these things. Eh? You know when I raise this topic, the reactions. Eh, what's that? It's not disclosed out there. Because it's not just the. It's not just dependent on the one who is making the disclosure, but the recipient of the information. Mm. How mature are you to handle the fact that maybe this is the past of your partner? There are people. If you tell them you had sex before, they also want to sleep with you. Hmm. Yeah. Eh? Yeah. There are people, if you tell them, I used to. Oh, if you used to, then all this different now. I've done it before, so let's continue. Why are you behaving now that you don't know what I'm talking about? So your disclosure rather ends up exposing you. Mm. So they don't have the maturity to receive it. That is why friendship is important. Let me read something to you. Something I put here, maybe to help. One of the one of the marks of a healthy friendship is vulnerability. And I wrote here that friendship developed in an environment of trust and transparency over a period of time should bring both parties to a state of vulnerability. This is because time will reveal many things about both parties. And that is why there must be trust, respect for each other's life details, and confidentiality. Mm. Mm. Many people today in relationship have never been friends. <laughs> Hey. This is one of the chaos we have. Many people in front. Today, today people say we are dating. Uh, we are dating well. You don't know the person. Friendship now is not in our dictionary. You meet somebody one week, two weeks, one month. You are, oh, you are oh, in oh, love. Oh, oh, you are in love. You know, I like you and all that. Then every day becomes a day of this. You are more than a, you are a researcher, <laughs> more than a lover. You are an archaeologist. Yeah. Mm. Digging out well, things. <laughs> Pressure jewels. <laughs> so friendship is lost. Mm. I'm telling you. How how key is with this friendship in the discussion we're having? Because you just mentioned there are a lot of people in relationship without friendship. Mm -hmm. So the friendship should it be a, a precursor into entering relationship? Mm -hmm. Or it should be during the relationship. Or it should be relationship as we apply into marriage. Friendship uh, mm -hmm. is part of the foundation. Mm. It's part of the building. Mm. It's part of the roof. <laughs> it's part of everything. But it must precede commitment. Mm. Mm. Bible says a friend is closer. Yes, There's a friend, a friend that sticks closer than a brother. brother. Yeah. Transparency is a mark of a healthy friendship. Liberty is a mark of a healthy friendship. What I mean, when I, mean, when I say liberty, what do I mean? I feel free around you. I don't feel threatened. I have room to become all I want to become. You don't have to think of what to say before you speak. Exactly. Mm. You know, Dr. Miles Moreau talks about four levels of friendship. Talks about acquaintance, mm. the high high. Talks about um, casual friendship. Mm. Maybe you have some... Uh, come, things in common. Oh, I like football. You like football. It's okay, but mm. that's not deep enough. Mm. They talk about close friendship. That is where you share, you know, common purpose. Mm. So you get to a place. You are talking to this person. It's like, my God, 
I'm like, you are so intelligent. Like, mm. one hour with you is like three years. Oh. Every time I speak to you, I'm edified. What I'm doing, like, I like what you're doing. That's a similar thing I want to do. You, 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 you like this. I also like orphans. I like orphans. You want to do estate. I want to do estate. Home for poor people. Oh, wow, that's great. You realize that at that level, your communication is richer. Mm. Now, how are you? Have you eaten? <laughs> good yeah, morning, babe. Good morning, babe. All those kind of things. <laughs> mm. You now have a richer conversation. Mm. Then you now move to the level of intimate friendship. Mm. Intimate friendship is when I can tell you, mm, you know, I'm Jared. This is my about to bad today. And then I'm Or you speak to me on the head. I think you have to work this. You have to work on it. There's some other be. Mm. And then when you, when you tell the person or the person tells you, like, hey, thank you so much. And thank you for telling me. You don't have to pray. Please. Three days dry. Mm. To say one tooth. <laughs> Do you know Queen Esther? <laughs> for like a man that I've not seen the husband. Yeah. Before you go and see the husband, <laughs> the king. Three days dry fasting. No food, no water. Mm. To go and see your own husband. Because if he doesn't invite you and you go, you are in trouble. So, so this even bring me this thing to mind. <laughs> so, on the issue of disclosure, yeah, about the intimate level, you for some reason you skipped, but you be able to mend that through, and you are somewhat in the intimacy. Mm -hmm. And genuinely, Pastor Bosco, you are a man, you are a woman. You have issue, issue with hygiene. Mm -hmm. So I learned some are even medical. My doctors and nurses, brothers here, yeah. I learned there are medical conditions that mm. can even affect yeah. how your environment... And you understand what I'm trying to say? Yeah. Should it be something you disclose to... You are in a relationship, you are begin, believing God to enter into marriage. Should you be able to disclose that, oh, sir... Even though we've kept ourselves, we are believing God to marry before we do. This is a problem. That you have order. <laughs> it will disclose itself. <laughs> <laughs> no, you know, it's different when uh, you are going to see <laughs> your, your, you know, I, 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 a life case just came to mind. Yeah. A life case where somebody I know yeah. told me he's ready to end the relationship yeah. because the girl They've met the father, all the necessary things. Yeah. One day, some announcement the thing made. Mm -hmm. it, that he, thing, like the order okay. of the, the of the lady of the lady. Okay. He he wanted to believe it's not true. Okay. Then, and the second time, he, I mean, he's dated this lady for quite a long time. Okay. But on the second time, when he heard it, he inquired, and the lady said. I'm trying to choose my words so because the gentleman was saying the thing was so bad that mm. bad is bad, yeah. that bad, that when he inquired from the lady, she was trying to put it to a dead rat or something in the neighborhood. Mm. So you, you can understand the extent I'm going to. <laughs> Only for when they separated, he heard from one of her classmates yeah. that there's a I don't know. That's why I want to be correct. If there's a sickness or something like yeah, that, there's a, I've heard that. Like yes, a medical condition. Con medical condition, yeah. and it's been around. Yeah, and it's a, a general knowledge among the girls those times in, yeah. in the school. Yeah, and the lady never disclosed. In certain circumstances, you know you don't want to lose your man. Mm -hmm. Should you disclose? Yes, because you need help. Yes, what you have to is it like I said it, that some of the things I mean self dis <laughs> disclosing. <so. laughs> I don't know how well they were in a relationship that he didn't know even at the early stages. Or if somebody has a bad order, that is a it, medical it's, condition. It's like it's it's not like the top, it's the down part. You know, that's how the guy put it to All me. right. So yeah. if it's the down part, mm -hmm. um <laughs> I don't know what he went doing there. Though. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I, 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 that's what I was trying to I mean move away from that side of the conversation. <laughs> Because I don't know what you were doing. I don't know, I don't know too. <laughs> but he, he called me for uh, advice and I told him this is beyond my pay grade. Yeah. So but it's it's a genuine mm. genuine concern. I don't know what you were doing there. Yeah. But then again, then again, if you're a lady and you have such an issue, I think it's honorable to solve it before committing. You know your yourself. 
you know the challenge. So you 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 solve it hmm. before you make the commitment. Because hmm. if you marry, it's going to come at you. Yeah, yeah. You, you see, it's going to come at you. Then again, this thing I'm talking about, like friendship. I don't have time to take you through all the marks of healthy friendship. We talk about uh, purpose driven, mm. clear conscience, and all that. You can build friendship with a man so much that he doesn't have to try sleeping with you to discover that you have a bad order on your private part. You can make that disclosure and he will stick and stay because beyond the smell, you have something to contribute. You are, you are so much a treasure that that is not enough for him to put you away. Mm. what you have brought is another conversation altogether that's what I'm saying many people don't have friendship at the foundation mm. their friendship is not God driven mm. so I meet you even this issue if we should go further I'm, I'm sure this person may have had sex with her Yeah, I'm in sure. the midst of the bad order <laughs> because God when help us. last is at work order is like perfume <laughs> until you are done then you start Realize, oh, more, 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 no. but you have finished it. I hope you are getting God it. Have mercy. So you don't need to do that to disclose or uh, you are lazy. I want a man to sleep with me. That any man who is able to stand it is my husband. That, that's a foolish criteria. But you can build friendship mm. where you have proven to be trustworthy. You have proven to have, to be a treasure. You are an asset. And when you make such a disclosure, the man who is God fearing will stand with you and help you to, 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 to overcome and move. That is it. You don't need to do that. All right? So with what the gentleman is saying, he doesn't have enough reason to stay with the lady. That is why an order is enough to put mm. him away. Mm. Yeah. Mm. So it's so clear that the single brothers and sisters out there, being in a relationship is beyond just feelings. Oh, yeah. It's just beyond the beauty. Yeah. It's just beyond the money. Like Pastor Bosco said, you need to find the purpose yeah. that you share. Yeah. You need to find the, the, the callings on both of you, your lives, yeah. that you, it will be impactful to even your generation. Yeah. I mean, <clears throat> then, then again, I want to talk about, there's a usual training, this side of, uh, uh, of, of the world, mm. where certain fathers on their death then you show you, you thought you were the last born. Mm. Yeah. Then all of a sudden, <laughs> the latest born will show up, mm -hmm. and you you it will be disclosed by your your ankles. Yeah. And yet, when you look at the person, you can see yourself in the person. Yeah. As a man, as a husband, as a wife, God forbid, God do not encourage us to commit adultery. Yeah. But should anything and that this son, we find ourselves having a kid, mm -hmm. a child, yeah. outside wedlock. Yeah. What as, as a pastor, as a counselor, yeah. I know there are certain men who might be watching us, or you know someone in this mm. state, mm. you want to still father the child, yeah. you want to bring him around you. Yeah. And it was, yes, a mistake. We, we, I believe you can, that is for another discussion for you to talk about that. Mm. But having this disclosure as a man and you as a wife receiving this kind of hurtful information yeah. and being for the family, what do you think should be? I'm not saying this or asking this question to, I mean, justify okay. or rationalize the whole yeah. issue of, I mean, having children outside marriage. Yeah. It's sinful. It's not acceptable. You have the covenant with your wife in the presence of God. We are supposed to stay away. Mm -hmm. But on this side of the world, once again, I've had a couple of friends who shared this. On my daddy's death, we found out that there was an end child. Yeah. What should a wife do when she received this formation? What should a husband do when this burden on the house needs to be shared and disclosed? Okay. And for the family, what, what do you say? Okay, so um, you are looking at even the age of the, the child involved. If this disclosure is made so late, by this time the child is grown up and all that, uh, maybe there's little responsibility on the part of you, the woman, towards the child. 
maybe he's already working. Mm. So he's not going to be so much of a burden to you and your 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 partner. Mm. You are you are talking about maybe the person is even dead and gone. Yeah. Uh, if the person is dead and gone, the child it's, it's maybe he's grown up. So mm. the child can take care of himself or herself. Mm. You don't really have a direct responsibility to the person. But let's assume that both of you are still alive. And then you later get to discover that your partner has a child elsewhere. There are legal implications to some of these things, but let's look at the moral mm. aspect. Okay, my dear, you have disclosed that this and this and it will hurt you. It will hurt you. Mm. You have to seek for counseling and healing. That is on the part of whoever is getting to hear it. Let's assume it is the woman who is hearing it. It will hurt you. Oh, so you have another child hmm. and you didn't tell me. Hmm. Then we are also looking at, okay, at what point was even this child gotten? Is it before we got married or during the marriage hmm. that the child came in? So whatever the case, the woman needs healing. Or if it's the man who is told, he also needs healing. That is basic. Hmm. Very, very basic. Because you cannot make proper decisions when you are not sound yourself. You may react in a way that will make a lot of things go bad. So it has happened. There's nothing so much you can do about it. Uh, Abraham, Sarai pushed Abraham mm. sleeping with her guy. Now she gets pregnant and starts disrespecting Sarai. And there was all kinds of issues at home. It's a crisis that have come. You have a child and God will now give you your own Isaac. And your Ishmael is older than your Isaac. Hmm. Your mistake is older, the, the, the fruit of your mistake is older than the, the fruit of God's promise. Hmm. Hmm. And you have to deal with it. Eventually, structurally, what happened? Ishmael has to be sent away with the mother at the proper time. Hmm. So there's a wisdom dimension in dealing with crisis. I think I have a message like that, wisdom in dealing with crisis. There's a wisdom you use to deal with crisis. The child is here. He is a child with us. Hmm. Okay, you may have to wait, let the child grow, or let the child go to the mother, and you, the man, you take care of the child. But the child cannot be here with us. But let the child go to the mother. Fine, it's your child. Feel free to take care of the child. Morally, you have to do that. Pay yeah. the school fees and everything, but the child cannot stay here with us. So, uh, there are different, different conditions you look at, but to the person who received the shocking news, You've got to pray, you've got to seek for counseling, you need time to heal, you know. And this is why I advise people that before you marry, build a life for yourself. This issue, sir, hmm. this scenario you have given, it to be received differently by different people in yeah. marriage. Yeah. There is a woman who have lived her life so well, built her empire and all that. If you bring such a news, it will shock her. But it doesn't take too much toll. It's like even if you don't even give her so much money and all the money is now going to this so-called child, she's still fine. There's another person somewhere. If the husband does not give one CD, she doesn't have money to comb her hair, <laughs> to go and wash her hair. The way this woman will also receive the news mm. is different. Wow. So you build a life, build your spiritual capacity, your emotional capacity and all that, so that when a shocker comes, you're able to absorb it. Absorb it. Very, very important. And but I think if it has happened, it has uh, happened. And I think also that's prayer, having to pray about God, to God, yeah. about the situation yeah. and what you should do. Yeah. It can have effect on how you absorb this shocker. Yes. And it is very, very key as believers yeah. as well. Yeah. Even when it comes to the disclosure, it's important. Before you even open up to your partner on an issue, you mm. want to take time to pray. Mm. The Bible says that the heart of a king is in the hands of God. Mm. He turns it as he wills. Mm. Before Nehemiah will speak to the king, mm. because he, he, he was moody, the king said, what is wrong? Why do you look so moody? Before he will open up to the king, he said, I prayed to my God. So that when I make this disclosure as to whatever is worrying me, because one of the things you disclose in relationship is your worries. Things that are bothering you. Mm. People are mm. going through issues. They cannot tell their husbands. They rather tell another person. But whatever it is that you want to disclose, you want to pray so that God will grant the person grace to help you. So mm. prayer is very, very potent 
in making disclosures. Mm. Very, very important. Wow. Yeah. On that note of prayer, um, I want to also remind us that we will be talking, the next phase I want us to discuss will be uh, on finances, either to as spouses, mm -hmm. have a joint yeah. account or joint finance uh, planning, or have separate ones. And if so, how far and how full should you disclose your finances? And, and I want us to really touch on the issue about finances. Mm. It is a very critical area when it comes to even relationship and marriage. Yeah. The big question has always been, should we keep separate accounts or should we do joint accounts? Um, one school of thought keeps saying, oh, keep separate accounts. Uh, when there's a need, you bring and bring and take, or keep separate accounts, you do this. I'm taking from the basic. I know there are rich folks on our God has blessed all of us here. Yeah. Other school of thought will say, let's put it together. Then let's move things together. I'm, I'm a proponent. I mean, I love that school of thought because I believe if I do things together with my wife, and we are able to achieve the mileage I never even expected. Mm. Can you throw light on the two? And if I'm throwing light, what are the kind of uh, disclosures you need to make? Full disclosures <laughs> or part disclosure? Because money, you go and I'll ask you a yeah. question from there. Well, there's a third aspect is that you have a joint account and you still have separate accounts. <laughs> <laughs> you have a joint account and still but still have, have a separate, separate account. Yeah, that's right. Another, that's another option. Mm. But you see, whichever you go for is dependent on both of you. Mm. The idea of whether to keep a joint account or a separate account mm. should not stem from lack of trust. Let me repeat that. The idea of whether to go for a joint account mm. or a separate account should not stem from lack of trust. Mm. If so, we can keep a joint account and to you, we are keeping a joint account. But I have another account you are not aware of. That's not full disclosure. And that is deception. Mm. So, before we even say which one is good or which one is advisable, mm. the reason for which you even do a joint account should not be because you don't trust your partner. We need to rule that out. Mm. When you are dealing with somebody you can't trust, you don't put structures in place to necessarily contain the person. <laughs> the person will find another way mm. to do mm. what they want to mm. do. Mm. Mm. This is very critical for me. So joint mm. account can be important because maybe, like I'm, I keep talking about purpose, maybe there's a project or something you want to pursue. I earn so much. You earn so much, and every month we all contribute this amount into this particular account for so so and so purpose. So by the time anybody touches money from that, I should have been aware. Yeah. So it brings it to the table for us to discuss. Or maybe by, by virtue of the kind of work I do, people are always asking me, Oh man of God, can I give can you give me this and I have a good heart? But if it's in a joint account, <laughs> I cannot just enter a room. Mm, My wife mm. must know. We've got to talk about it. So it's rather something you can do to serve as a check and balance for the family, for your vision, for your pursuits, not because you don't trust the person. Mm. Otherwise, I can tell you I earn 5000 I put 3000 in the joint account, Whilst maybe I have another earning that brings 10000 I'm not telling you because I want the liberty to do my own thing. Hmm. So let's rule out mistrust as a reason for having maybe a joint account. The same way when it comes to having separate accounts, the issue of sincerity comes in. Your, your faithfulness must be first to God. Hmm. Also, let me say this. Hmm. You can go to seminars, you can meet marriage therapies, you can go to all kinds of things. Until we come to the place of reverencing God, every teaching and theory is useless, mm. including what I'm doing. Mm. Mm. It sometimes eh, the main thing is so basic, but we go round, 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 round. complicating things with theories and all kinds of things. Whatever I'm saying here, somebody can listen to it. If you don't 
fear God, mm. you will still be unfaithful when it comes to your finances or even your sexual life or whatever. That is so basic. If you come and tell me that oh, your salary is 2000 and it's actually 10000 before you lie to me, you've lied to God. Yeah. That's why um, I think Paul, who told uh, Ananias and Sapphira, said, why yeah. are you lying to yeah. the Holy Spirit? Yeah. This thing we are doing in the church, everybody has the liberty to, to bring freely from their possessions. So if you have sold your land and then you are bringing the money, say that, oh, I, I can yeah. give you everything. Why do you bring, <laughs> bring, and, some. Oh, bring some and make it look yeah. like you have brought more? Like, who is forcing you? Yeah. Be free. You are lying to the Holy Spirit. And immediately they go. What? Today people are still going, just that they are lying. <laughs> they are going by their life. They, mm. they, they, they are going different ways. Mm. Mm. So this thing, it's let every husband, every wife listening to me, every fiance, every fiance, every girlfriend, boyfriend, whatever you call it, until you come to the place of reverencing God, all your attempts will be deception. Mm. Mm. That, is it, that is it. No matter the option, either joint, whether whatever. joint account, separate account. Mm. You have to be sincere to yourself, mm. to God, and to yourself. But let's go a bit deeper and talk about character flaws mm. that make it difficult for people to disclose. Let me say this: your attitude can make it difficult for God to, for your partner to obey God. <laughs> Please take that again. Take that again. <laughs> your attitude, yeah, can make it difficult. difficult. For your, for your partner, partner to, to obey God. Ace. Your partner has to obey God. Mm. All of us must obey God. Mm. But your character or your mm. attitude can pose a threat, <laughs> a challenge mm. to the obedience of your partner. So, for example, you go to your wife. Yeah. Uh, the Lord laid on my heart that this project at work, yeah. I should commit this man's salary to it. <laughs> And your wife goes like, we are in September. Mm -hmm. School fees. Yeah. My dad, the this, the that. You are taking it. How do you want us to survive? Or is that what you are talking about? No. Okay. The money, that money you want to commit to the project is not for you alone. Mm. So she is right mm. to reason with you. Reason. Please, brothers, husbands, boyfriends, fiance. <laughs> <laughs> Please, our women are always right. Not when always they... right. Okay, I've been corrected. Our women <laughs> can usually be right. <laughs> because what you said, it's yeah. just, they just want good reasoning. Yes. Let's put the thing on the table. Let's discuss it. Yeah. Let's all agree to what you are doing. Yeah. Could it be your emotions or you truly hear from God? Exactly. Let the reason separate the two yeah. from the spirit and from the feelings. Yeah. Mm. Today I'm taking something home. Please go ahead. You, go, you, you, you can be so much motivated to do something, mm. but your timing could be wrong. Maybe you are trying to prove a point or whatever. You see, when Sarai told Abram to send um, Ishmael away. Yeah. Ishmael and the mom came back, right? Mm. He said, go back home. <laughs> because what Sarai said at the time was not consistent mm. with God's timing and God's will. But when she became Sarah, a change of identity, a change of name, her quality changed. And when she told Abraham, send each other away, God told Abraham, listen to your wife. What you are saying is very deep. Oh. Yeah. So now listen to her. The same person who spoke first, who I didn't agree with now, listen to her. So it's about you being in sync with the will of God. Very important. Because your husband may be going wrong, mm. but if you're in sync with the will of God, mm. you can check him. Your wife may be going wrong, if you're in sync with the will of God. I, I dealt with an issue this week, and myself, my position was this way. My wife agreed with me on the same position. I called a few people, they agreed with me. Then, I took a step to dealing with the issue. 
and it didn't end the way we had positioned ourselves, but it ended on the note of peace and progress. Mm. But I believe in the course of time, our position may become the reality. But this may not be the time for our position to take the lead. <laughs> so, she may disagree with you now, and she's right. But tomorrow, if she disagrees, she may be wrong. She may disagree with you today, and she may be wrong. But tomorrow, if she disagrees with you, she is right. The important thing is that you want to operate the wisdom of God. Okay, let me say this again. Somebody say, oh, where they are, dear bro. Bro, this generation, even those in church, we are struggling because people have carried God like this. <laughs> and they put it somewhere. So let me do my own thing. Yeah. It's my boo, my bed. This boo baiting. People have carried God out. <laughs> when you talk about a, a, sim a simple concept like read your Bible faithfully. Mm. Ah, how does reading my Bible faithfully make me have a successful marriage? Mm. Ah, it will shock you what you will discover from Scripture. Mm. That will change the way you think. And peace will be restored in your home. Let me emphasize that this program, many people will be listening to us. Mm. But if you're a Christian listening to me, mm. you should never get tired of prayer Mm. Bible study as contributions to a successful marriage. If mm. you get tired, you have a problem. You're not a Christian. Because the manual with which you succeed is the word of God. The manual. The manual. If any other person has mm. a challenge, fine. But if you're a child of God and we are saying that you have to pray for your marriage to work, you, you have to read your Bible faithfully for your marriage to work and you have a problem, then your problem is a really is really a problem. Hmm. All right? Wow. So it's it's very important. But this is what I, when I, the, what, what I said is not so much that your wife maybe disagrees with you and all that. When I said your character can make it difficult for your partner to yeah. obey God, yeah. this is what I mean to say. In the area of finances. In the area of finances. Mm -hmm. This is what I mean to say. So, let's say every time I tell my wife that uh, maybe I have an income raise, that is when a new budget comes. <laughs> Unless I don't, maybe we are okay, we are managing, we have a vision, we want to do everything. Then anytime I say that, oh, somebody has given me a thousand, I'm like, hey, my hell, <laughs> It's like every disclosure mm. is an open check for a demand. But maybe there is something the person may want to do with the money, which is equally beneficial to both of you. Or there may be a more pressing need, but... If you position yourself always to demand anytime there's a disclosure, you make it difficult for the person to open but, but, but so what's cool. yeah. What if genuinely, I mean, before the gift came in, mm -hmm. you know human wants are insatiable. Mm -hmm. the, your wife might have said, I was going to say bae, this will be eating. Mm -hmm. My husband, yeah. I have these, these needs. Yeah. And we all know, mm -hmm. but because I know, with our current plans, yeah. I'm postponing it. Mm -hmm. And you come in with this gift. Mm -hmm. It's not right for me to tell my husband, okay. oh, remember what I shared with you. Okay. Can I do it now? Two things. Mm. Two things. We are taught, I'm not too much a financial person, but we all attend seminars. We are taught that you save before you spend. You want mm. to be rich, right? You must save before mm. you spend. And we must also avoid impulse buying. Mine so that we can save mm. and make some progress. Number two, this issue of always making a demand when your husband tells you another money has come is, is more of a character flaw than an expression of a genuine need. So I talked about the person always. Well, Pastor always. Pastor I want to always. this one. I want to talk for my sisters. Okay. She is made known to you already. Mm -hmm. That no, that is different. Okay. That is, if so if you knew already, that there was already a need at home. Good. So okay. the person has already told you that mm. I need A, B, C. Mm. So you as a husband will even be happy that, that yes. oh, thank God. Every man wants to be able to take a good care of their home. Mm. So you already know the need at home. You plan to buy some dress for her. There are some things you wish to do for her, but maybe the means was not there. Yeah. Now the means has come. So you are excited to meet that need for her. That is different from somebody 
who they call them spendthrift. Somebody who is just in the habit, unless he doesn't spend money. <laughs> want to buy something. A new budget will come, come up. up. I'm talking about it's, right. a, it's an attitudinal flaw. Right. It's a weakness. Right. Right. Not that the person genuinely communicated to you that this need is there. Mm. So you haven't believed in God for the means to meet that need. Yeah. So these are two different things. Right. So as a husband, you've got to take good care of the home. Even there are men who, who, do you know there are people who just want to collect money from you, even church, yeah? you're going to give a testimony. <laughs> Say, God has opened the door, I've been promoted, now my, 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 my money has been lifted from maybe uh, 10,000 10, to mm. uh, 20,000. The moment you close, Somebody will come to you and say, please, so, um, <laughs> things are tough for the past three days. Eh? <laughs> yeah. It's like they can't hear that yeah. money has entered your hand. Mm. They must have their share. There are people who will position to call you at a certain time of the month. It's like they have made up their mind that the money you are earning, their share is inside. Most mm. of the time, they are family people. Yeah. yeah. That, that is what I'm talking about. When you are a wife or a, a, a fiancé mm -hmm. and you have that attitude, there are some men who do that too. <laughs> there are men who borrow money from ladies and they don't pay back. <laughs> Mercy. But Mercy. the ladies are generous at heart. Mm. And they are also in love. Mm. And they believe that I must help that my man to get better. And when he becomes better, we will become great together mm. and live together forever. I hope you're getting yeah. it. And the man who is taking advantage of that. Unless the lady doesn't say, Oh, my father has sent me money. Wow. Hey, Charlie, I have to buy some books. So I have to do this. So if they are students. So that is a problem. When you do that and your partner begins to discover that, ah, it's like every time I tell this guy, I've gotten this. We have been talking about money. Let's talk about laptop. Maybe for students. Gadgets. Mm. Mobile phone. He's using this phone. The next time you tell him or her that you have gotten an iPhone, his phone is not good again. <laughs> Charlie, I'm going here. Can you give me your iPhone? You need deliverance. I, I, you need deliverance. I, 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 I'm doing this. Can you give me your iPhone? It's mm. like they can't hear a good news and It'll not place a, a demand. Mm. That's what I'm talking about. Wow. When you do that, you are wow. putting the person in a tight corner to keep quiet. Mm. Not because they are wasting it. Sometimes they want to help you. Mm. It's like if I tell this man this, he will finish this money right now. Mm -hmm. If I tell, tell this lady, she will finish the money now. So they want to now keep quiet, which is not the best. But your attitude is mm. posing a problem. Wow. Wow. Your attitude can pose a problem and deny someone or your partner from obeying God. Mm -hmm. According to Pastor Bosco, Make and it's very difficult true. To difficult, God. difficult. Yeah. Um, if you are here and you have any question, you have any concern, you can please post it on, and Pastor Bosco will be up to answer. Then again, Pastor Bosco will spend some five minutes of the time to pray, lead us into prayer. Because as he said, there's nothing as powerful as prayer and you obeying God into this journey. What's full disclosure? When it comes to finances, are we supposed to make? So, my wife knows my salary. Yeah. There are certain bonuses or allowances that comes within the year. Mm -hmm. Am I supposed to tell her when it comes, how much it comes? Am I supposed to tell her because sometimes, genuinely, you, you have a friend calling you and you know that your friend is really in dire need. You need to help. Yeah. But then again, should you have Tell my wife, should I tell my partner, should I tell my girlfriend that this is the salary I get? This is when I get bonuses or allowances. And it's how much that comes to my account. Is it necessary to give full part or not at all? Okay, so if you bring in girlfriend, I'll say no. <laughs> <laughs> because a girlfriend, we, we, we attach some importance to certain mm. things, but a girlfriend is still a friend. Mm. Um, uh, that's why I talk about courtship. You see, when you mm. get to the level of courtship, you've made a commitment to marry the person. Mm. Authorities are aware. Parents are aware. So at that level, you are not even discussing 
um, so much of how much you earn, what comes to you as mm. your bonus comes, it's, it's of no essence at that level. Mm. If I don't even tell you, it's of no, we are not married. Okay. So it's not so important. But when you marry, it's important for your partner to know whatever comes to you. Mm. So a lot of things comes to agreement, communication agreement. Okay, this is the bonuses and all that. What What is it going to do? Mm. Uh, we have to pay children's school fees. Mm -hmm. We are building our house. But maybe I also need some money on me for my uh, movements. Maybe I'm going here. Somebody asked me for something. So this is how much we are setting aside for the family. Anything that is left, you can use it to mm. do some rounds mm. and all that. So I talked about you looking at the impact of withholding information on the union. Mm. So there's a you have you are building you need building materials or you are doing a project and then you have bonus of fifty thousand and ten thousand is needed at home and your partner does not know that's wickedness that's wickedness now let yeah. me say this disclosing to your partner is disclosing to yourself because the two shall become one <laughs> go there again go there again this making disclosure mm. to your partner is equally making disclosure to yourself because the two of you have become one wow so whatever you have is for her. Yeah. Whatever she has, whatever she has, is for you. The two shall become one. So there is no, mm. there is no, there is no loss. You see, you are talking about other disclosures. Let's say you are doing a policy, maybe insurance policy, and not, do you know? You see, this money thing. Eh? Recently, I, I am the kind of person. I don't really give much. I, mm. I don't even. I don't think I have a full, complete idea of even how much my wife earns. Mm. But I was listening to a, a seminar or something. And I was like, no. I said that. I said, I, I want us to make a full disclosure of how much you earn, mm. because there are insurance policies that are in her name for our children. Right. I have in, insurance policies. Mm. She has insurance policies. She is on government payroll. So there are deductions they can make directly from her salary. There are payments I will have to do that they may want to deduct from source. I mm. can do that through her account. Mm. So we have to disclose, okay, you are doing this deduction straight away. So you are taking care of A, B, C. This is how much comes to me, though I am not on government payroll, but this is how much comes to me. Okay, let it be channeled to this course. Mm. If you don't do that, a time will come, you can even conclude that maybe your wife is not helping, your husband is not helping. Yeah. yeah. Or maybe she's doing so much, but you don't know. Mm. Or you think the person can do better, but because you don't know even how much comes in, you think he or she is wicked. So what do you have to hide? This is my salary. This is your salary. In fact, when you make such disclosures, it makes room for understanding. Yeah. So if we need to buy a car, if we see a car that is maybe a million dollar, you don't force me to buy because you mm. and I know that what we have cannot buy a million dollar car. Mm. So let's go for maybe Kia Picanto and start life with this one. And rather save, do some business, some investment, so that in the next five, ten years we can buy a million dollar car. Communication with understanding. Mm. But when disclosure is not made, and hey, you you are wicked. You, you can do this. You are not doing... You can do. all God right. help So us. you have to discover... I mean, disclose all that. Mm. Your investments, the savings you have, your salary, and then where each money goes. And give room. Maybe you have some for yourself to do your rounds and all that. Right. Yeah. I have a question here. Say, can you build the friendship when you are already in relationship? As we were talking about friendship. Yeah. Can you build it when you... We just based on this information we shared yeah. discovered that you it was a necessity mm -hmm. can you now build it and how do you do this okay i'll say yes but it will come at a cost it will come at a cost because you have to come to default setting mm. maybe you have gone ahead to do certain things say certain things uh, that you are you are running ahead of yourself Again, you must communicate. You know what? I think we should take our time, get to know each other more. You must be transparent. Your friendship must be purpose-driven. 
there must be liberty between both of you. So gradually you realize that no, we were rushing each other, but let's take our time. There must be, I don't know if I mentioned transparency or sincerity. Yeah. Yeah. It's important because hmm, um, it's important because without that, you can't build a strong friendship or relationship when everybody's an actor. You are doing things to impress the other person. Mm. So it's possible. If I say it's not possible, no, it is possible. But on the platform of sincerity. Wow. It is wow. possible, but wow. on the platform, the platform of, of sincerity. sincerity. Because when you begin to build genuine friendship with some of the parameters I've mentioned, not all, but I've mentioned some, some of the parameters I've mentioned, you may now begin to really discover who you are dealing with. Mm. That is when you even know whether maybe you are meant for each other or not. No. Wow. And to come at a cost on the platform of sincerity. Wow. Wow, people of God. We fast time is fast approaching, and as Pastor Bosu said, the most important thing with this has to do with prayer. And I believe with what he has said, it is falling on the good heart, and people are ready to be transformed by this. We want to spend the next five minutes into our time into Pastor Bosu leading us into prayer, that the grace and the wisdom to him have this, do these disclosures with our wives, with our husbands with our fiancés and fiance will be upon us because he has made us understand that it's very important and is the, I mean, the pivotal for our relationships. Do not worry if time is fast approaching because we'll, we are having this month, these sessions will be coming on. So prepare yourself. And Pastor Bosco, please speak on our lives. Declare that anyone that is even in dilemma yeah. at this season, by this word that the Lord has released through you, May the grace and the wisdom to disclose be released in the name of Hallelujah. Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. So we thank God for this evening. We want to spend the next few minutes in prayer. I just want you to lift your voice and thank God for all that you have heard. I know for many people you have to spend time to digest whatever you have heard, but just thank God in the name of Jesus, speak in the language of the Spirit. Thank God for everything you have heard. In the name of Jesus, la bo shada ba re ka be so la ba ta. Le ka ba 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 ro sa ba ta. Le ka ba 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 ro sa da ba ta. Le ka ba 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 ro sa ba ta. Le ka ba 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 ro sa ba ta. Le ka ba 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 ro sa ba ta. Le ka ba 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 ro sa ba ta. Le ka ba 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 ro sa ba ta. Le ka ba 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 ro I am the mama mato sa de brandi di di meno sa da branda da da baha rada mama mato sa de brandi to sa da bapaya rabba gabari antala bateri abapa reka boru ne meno sa de branda da da baha ikapala wada rada meno sa di brandi de de mato sa da baha ikapali ande de de mato mo jesus you want to pray you want to pray the lord by your grace any dent on my life mm. that makes Kapali, it difficult even to be believed when I tell the truth by your grace by let your it grace. be lifted off my in life in the name of Jesus any struggle Leap you may be having now in the name of Jesus let the grace of God take it away in the name of Jesus in the mighty name in the of, name of Jesus. Jesus lift your voice and pray let every dent be taken away any struggle you are going through now any witness you are battling with now that will even make it difficult for you to be believed that will make it difficult for you to open up let your grace of God be abundant in our lives let release your grace of to us, lay cup on the baha, rade me and did the demato side of the be a protest, be a protest out, out of your life. May the Lord grant you a new garment, a garment of trust, a garment of faithfulness in the mighty name of Jesus. Let that weakness be a protest in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, you want to pray that, oh God, anybody who have joined, you may have done something that. 
that may have hurt your partner, but we want to pray for the healing of every heart. Let the heart of every wife be healed. Let the wife of every husband be healed. In the mighty name of Jesus, there are single ladies today who cannot trust their partners. Their partners themselves did not do anything wrong. But they dated somebody before who broke their heart. And now they can't trust the next person. And it will affect the next relationship. But we are praying the Spirit of God. Let every heart be, be healed. Let trust be built again. Let homes be united again. Lift your voice and pray that prayer. Let every heart be healed. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray for the healing of the heart of every woman. We pray for the healing of the heart of every man. Homes that are tearing apart in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh Lord, we pray for your healing. Rabbi Sola Bagata in Beria Kabo Sadaba. Oh Lord, we pray for your healing. Oh Lord, we pray for your healing. Oh Lord, we pray for your healing. In the mighty name of Jesus, let young ladies trust again. Let young men trust again in the mighty name of Jesus Rabbika Parwa Talabapa Sika Pariata Rega Parwa Katalaba Sika Labapa Rega Peria Katosa Lika Malaga Teriata Iparando Sadaba Ika Meria Kaparwa Taya Abe Zalababa In Dalaba Kamperiata Ayam Dalalabape Aram Beria Yagapa in Talwa Kaperiata, a Zalababe, a Kompalagata, a Perianda Paya, a Zikamalagada, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, you are praying that Lord let my wife, who is a Barnabas, or my husband, who is a Barnabas, be released. I will explain. When Saul became converted, the church was afraid to accept him. But there was a man named Barnabas who held his hand and took him to the apostles and said, this man was once a persecutor, but he had an encounter. May God bless you with men who will not be afraid of your history. May God bless you with a lady who will not be afraid of your history. May God God bless you with a wife who will tarry with you through life, a husband who will stand with you. The thing that make people to give up on you, they will hear the very things and it will increase their love for you. Just as Jesus did not run away from us because of our sins, may the Lord put your love in the heart of the right man. May the Lord put your love in the heart of the right woman. You are praying that, oh Lord, in your mercy. Bless me with a wife, a husband that will tarry with me, that will bear my pain, that will be with me and help me to grow. Lift your voice and pray that prayer. Lord, in the name of Jesus, a man that will not run away from me because of the history you have saved me from. A woman who will not desert me because of my weaknesses. In the mighty name of Jesus, may the Lord put your love in the heart of the right man in the heart of the right woman I pray for an encounter for every wife and every husband may the Lord give you a revelation about your heart your husband and your wife a revelation that will cause you to rise and stand with them and pray with them in the name of Jesus I make a declaration that no husband will go down again for the Lord will give Give your wife grace. No wife will go down again. For the Lord will give your husband grace in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, Kabe Salabakata. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Just want to lift your voice and thank God. In the name of Jesus, Father, we give you praise. We thank you for answer prayer. 
Thank you for blessing us. The Bible said that when Isaac took Rebekah into the tent of the mother, he was comforted by her. I pray in the name of Jesus, may your wife be a comfort unto you. May your husband be a comfort unto you. In the mighty name of Jesus, oh, may the Lord bless you with a wife, a husband that will bear with you the pains of this life, the challenges of this life. In the name of Jesus. Jesus. Father, we thank you for answer prayer in Jesus' name. Jesus, my Amen. 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 God bless you all for coming. And it's been wonderful time spending with you this Sunday evening. <laughs>